As we've been doing our deep dive here into Donald Trump's depraved past, one photograph of someone kept on coming up over and over again. Here it is right here. Donald Trump with his kids, Eric and Ivanka right there, hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. But then the person next to him, you see that person on the right right there? You see who the arrow is pointing to? And I've seen this photo over and over and over again. Who is this individual? I've seen him in other photos with Donald Trump here. And there's Donald Trump with him again there. And there's the Jeffrey Epstein photo with Donald Trump, Ivanka, uh, and Eric who look terrified. And that man again, who is that man? It's John Casablancas. And I've heard that name before. Who is John Casablancas? He started Elite Modeling Agency in the 1970s. And just to give you a little bit of information about John Casablanca's personal life, um, in 1983, he divorced his first wife to marry a 15-year-old by the name of Stephanie Seymour. Uh, in 1993, he married his third wife, 17-year-old um, at the time. And he started this modeling agency, someone who Donald Trump would hang out about. I said, I read John Casablanca's name in one of the articles where I was talking about Trump's Epstein connections. I'll get to that in a moment. But then it clicked as well that Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka, who's in that photo with Epstein and Eric and Don Jr. and the kids look terrified and John Casablanca's like looking at them in such a in such a creepy way that Ivanka became a model when she was 15 years old for John Casablanca's. She was a 15-year-old model for this guy's modeling agency. Then I remembered I shared a video months ago of Ivanka where she was talking about modeling. Hey, remember this video of her? This is when she was hired by Casablancas at the age of 15. Play this clip. But first, we asked about the recent report that said Ivanka was demanding supermodel wages of $10,000 to do the fashion shows, a report she denies. I don't need to model. My, my family has money and they can support me, And but I model because I love to model. And it's something that I enjoy doing. So I don't think it's fair that they made me sound greedy about it and all because I model because I love to model. And that's really all there is to it. Okay, and, and here things just get super creepy and, and your mind's going to be blown. Here's an article we uncovered from August 17th, 1997 in the New York Times. This is from the New York Times. Her cheekbones high or her name Trump. This is about Ivanka Trump, this article. And at this time, this article is written, Ivanka is 15 years old. 15 years old. She's a girl. Here's what it says. She seems to have this modeling thing down. There are these sexy outfits when you show up for an interview wearing a floor-length, see-through white dress. You tend to turn heads. There is the denial that she exercises and the chowing down, eating a nice-sized lunch in front of a reporter, proving that she is not a wacky dieter. And there are the banalities stated in the studied contraction-free sentences. Quote, I live for the morning, for the moment, said Ivanka Trump, the daughter of, well, you know. Quote, I do not fear the future because I think every experience makes you stronger. I am the kind of person who has no regrets. One should hope not, the article states. Miss Trump is 15 years old. And they're talking about see-through dresses here as she's working for Casablancas, who's in that photo with her and Eric and, and Epstein. I just started looking at some other photos of this Casablancas guy with very young girls here and, and here and, and, and here. And again, as I looked into his, um, his past of marrying a 15-year-old. Um, he's no longer alive. He passed away in 2013 at the age of 70. Um, then I remember I did a, st I remember Casablanca's name was in one of the stories I did about Trump's Epstein connections. And then it kind of hit me over here. It's this story. Teen models, powerful men, and private dinners. When Trump hosted Look of the Year, when Trump hosted Look of the Year, John Casablanca's elite modeling agency owned the elite Look of the Year competition. That's what that's referring to. Uh, in the early 90s, Donald Trump judged this modeling competition that Casablanca's would put on. And here's what the article states. In September 1991, a large private yacht cruised towards the Statue of Liberty. It was a clear, breezy evening, and from the upper deck of the Spirit of New York, a golden sunset could be seen glinting off the Manhattan skyline. 
Downstairs, a party was in flow. Scores of teenage girls in evening dresses and mini skirts, some as young as 14, danced under disco lights. It could have been a high school prom were it not for the crowd of older men surrounding them. As the evening wore on, some of the men, many old enough to be the girls' fathers or even grandfathers, joined them on the dance floor, pressing themselves against the girls. One balding man in a suit wrapped his arms around two young models, leering into a film camera that was documenting the evening. Can you please get some beautiful women around me, please? The party aboard the Spirit of New York was one of several events that Donald Trump, then 45, attended with a group of 58 aspiring young models that September. They had traveled from all around the world to compete in Elite's Look of the Year competition, an annual event that had been running since 1983 and was already credited with launching the careers of Cindy Crawford, Helena Christensen, Stephanie Seymour. At stake was a life-changing prize, a $150,000 contract with the world's then-leading modeling agency, Elite Model Management, run by John Casablancas. Trump was closely involved in Casablancas' competition, In 1991, he was a headline sponsor, throwing open the plaza, his lavish chateau-style hotel, overlooking Central Park, transforming it into the main venue, and accommodating the young models. He was also one of 10 judges. Then Donald Trump in 2005, during a Howard Stern appearance, bragged about when he would be a judge in these competitions and when he owned Miss Teen USA, one of the things he liked to do, and this is in his own words, he liked to walk in on the teenage girls getting undressed in the dressing room and look at them and say that he was inspecting them. That's one of the things that Donald Trump said he liked to do and that he would do as the inspector of the teenage girls. This is what Donald Trump said on Howard Stern in 2005. Let's play this clip. Well, you could also say as the owner of the pageant, it's your obligation to do that. So so you have done that. Now, tell well, me I'll what tell you the, the funniest is that I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. And, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that like everything doctor, is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress. Is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like And here's an article from The Independent. Donald Trump boasted about beating semi-naked teenagers in beauty pageants. Mr. Trump said on Howard Stern's radio show in 2005 that he can get away with it, walking into the dressing room to inspect beautiful women. Donald Trump used to stroll right into the dressing rooms of beauty pageants while the contestants, some of whom were teenagers, were naked or half-dressed, a former model has claimed. Tasha Dixon was 18 when she competed in the Miss USA pageant, when winning the state crown. Our first introduction to him was when we were at dress rehearsal and half-naked changing into our bikinis. He just came strolling right in. There was no second to put a robe on or any sort of clothing or anything. Some girls were topless, others were naked. She added that people who worked for Mr. Trump pressured the women to fawn over him, go walk up to him, talk to him, get his attention, while still not fully dressed. Miss Dixon added the situation made them feel awkward and physically vulnerable. Four women who competed in the 1997 Miss Teen USA beauty pageant also said the Republican Donald Trump used to walk in. Some of the girls were as young as 15 years old at the time. And with all of this going on, Donald Trump then had Ivanka become a model for John Casablancas, the New York Times writing an article about like see-through dresses, a photograph of Donald Trump, Epstein, along with Eric and Ivanka, and they look absolutely terrified with Casablanca standing right there. Donald Trump on audio recording, bragging about going into the dressing room in these beauty pageants. And I can go on because that's just the tip of the iceberg. Remember, during this period in the 90s when all this was going on, here's what we know just based on testimony at the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. A witness testified that Jeffrey Epstein drove her to Mar-a-Lago to meet Donald Trump when she was just 14 years old. 
Trump's testimony. We know that Donald Trump's name appears in the depositions. Jeffrey said to one of the victims, it's great, let's call up Trump. We'll call up Trump and we'll go to, I don't recall the name of the casino, but we'll go to the casino. And then there was another article from this time period, a article in a London paper, and here's what it said. It talked about how just weeks after ditching his second wife, America's best-known billionaire, Donald Trump, this is from 1997, um, has fallen under the spell of a 20-year-old English girl, Trump 50, who has failed, who has failed in his bid to secure the services of Princess Diana's butler, Paul Burrell, was in search of another British trophy when he met London model Anuska de Georgia at a party in Manhattan. Several American millionaires already had their eyes on Anuska, but she was there with Robert Maxwell's daughter Ghislaine who has introduced several of her attractive friends to the property developer. And none of his would-be rivals owned a vast mansion in Florida like Donald Trump does, Mar-a-Lago, where I have dined with him and his outgoing wife, Marla. It's enough to make any young girl go weak at the knees. After their meeting, Trump flew Madame Maxwell, referring to Ghislaine, flew Madame Maxwell and the model south to the Sunshine State, where all three enjoyed a happy weekend together. And when they returned to New York, Anuska was installed in one of Donald Trump's apartments there. Oh, by the way, just so you know, if you want a source for that article that I just told you about, it's the Sunday Mirror, November 23rd, 1997. The author of that article was someone named Chris Hutchins talking about Ghislaine Maxwell putting these, um, introducing these young women to Donald Trump, and he would install them in his apartment. And then, of course, you have Donald Trump's own words saying that he thinks that Jeffrey Epstein is a terrific guy um, and who likes to hang out with girls on the younger side. This is what Donald Trump said to the New York Magazine in 2002. This is Trump's own words. I've known Jeff for 15 years, terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, many of them on the younger side. So folks, you put this all together in this time period, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, you have Donald Trump hanging out with Epstein. Epstein lived very close to Donald Trump. Then you, I looked at who's the other person, like who, who's his core group of friends? You got Epstein, you got John Casablancas, and now you know about um, Casablancas history. Also, what's going on in elite model agency at this time? Well, now with the Adult Survivors Act, we're seeing these lawsuits being filed for what was taking place at elite model from some of its top executives. This was a former model claims that she was raped as a teenager by the agency executive. Carrie Sutton was a 16-year-old runaway in 1985 when a modeling, modeling scout discovered her in Northern California. It wouldn't be much longer before Sutton, who then went by the name Carrie Otis, arrived in New York City after catching the eye of elite model management co-founder, you got it, John Casablancas. The girl who had been homeless months earlier was about to embark on a career under the care of a prestigious modeling agency. She was a child when powerful adults she depended on at elite preyed upon her sexually or turned a blind eye to the abuse, according to a lawsuit that she filed in the Southern District of New York. Um, again, horrific, horrific stuff. So you put all of that together, and then you also put together that now Donald Trump, what has he been talking about on all of the audio recordings? Like it gives new, I think, light to when Donald Trump says that one of the things he does is grab women by their genitals and they let you do it, he says, right? That's what he said in, and then in the E. Jean Carroll case, what did he say as well? He said, fortunately, it was unfortunately or fortunately, that's what happens with wealthy men. And that's what wealthy men can get away with rewards to uh, those effect. Donald Trump's been found liable by a jury for engaging in sexual abuse of E. Jean Carroll. He's got another defamation case scheduled, but he's already been found liable and responsible for that. You know, and then he has Ivanka work for him. I mean, folks, this stuff runs deep. And this stuff is some of the most disgusting and vile things. And, you know, I, I just want to bring in and make the connections. And then, by the way, I've done other videos of this, so I won't belabor the point here. How Trump met Melania 
at the Kit Kat Club in 1997 from another modeling agency, a modeling agency run by someone named Paolo Zampoli, who would bring in um, these beautiful women from Eastern Europe. And one of the women were Melania, and they would throw these events for wealthy businessmen at clubs like the Kit Kat Club. And that's how Trump was introduced and met Melania. And then she got an Einstein genius visa and, and had her whole path expedited here. And again, I'm not just, I'm, let's just focus on the source data and just pull it together like that. You know, we're going to keep on digging here, but that was, that was Trump's crew, Epstein, Casablancas. Those were, those were, those were who he was close with. And think about those who, those are who your friends are during that period. And then you're saying all of these things, bragging about the conduct out loud that's caught on, on tape. It's right there, folks, right before our eyes. The question is, do we, as Americans, as the world, what do we think about this? What do we think about this? By the way, I want to hear from you too. Do you think I should keep on reporting on things like this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, because some people say, hey, focus on all the other. I do focus on the economy and the legal cases. I'm never going to stop that. But I just think these reports are important. I think moral character is important. But I'd love to hear from you on that. Leave, leave a note in the comments. Thanks for watching this and please subscribe. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers. Thanks to your support and have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.